I would like to give you a uh, list of the women that we studied from the Talmud with a little bit of anecdotal information on each. We studied Yalta. Yalta is the wife of Rev. Rav Nachman and the daughter of the Resh Galuta, who was head of the Jewish community. So she was quite wealthy and quite learned. She's from the um, beginning of the uh, fourth century, end of the third century. She was extremely knowledgeable in Torah, so much so that she openly influenced rabbinic dispensation constantly. She was also very passionate. There's a story about Yalta going to the store and breaking 400 jars of wine when the scholar Ula insults her by not passing her the Kiddush cup as recommended by her husband. So she was especially good. Here's Baruria. Baruria is the wife of um, Meir and the daughter of Hanina ben Tradion. She's from the second century. She is scholarly and wise. She speaks the language that the rabbis speak. When her husband prays for the death of some hooligans, destroying them, upsetting the neighborhood. She instead, instead instructs him to pray for their redemption on their death. And she's emotionally very strong. Probably the most famous story about her really shows this. She softens the news of the death of her two sons to her husband by using the metaphor that the children are alone from God and God to Here's Ima Shalom. Ima Shalom was the sister of Rabban Gamliel, who was head of the Sanhedrin. And she's the wife of Rabbi Eliezer. She's from the first century. She is Sean Witted. She goes about designing a plan to expose the, uh, one of the corrupt judges at the time. And she's emotionally also very strong. She has to suffer great distress. Her father is murdered by mom and there's an estrangement between her beloved brother and her beloved husband. And there's actually a death later of her brother as a result of a rabbinical rift between the two men. And her husband's prayers actually for his tachan and being answered with the death. There's Rachel, who is the wife of Rabbi Akiva. She's from the second century. She is generous. Generous beyond belief. She sacrifices 24 years of living poverty while Akiva goes to study and become a prominent rabbi. So she's instrumental in his, in his rise to prominence. There's a woman called the Rebbe's maid, and the Rebbe is Judah Hanasi, the um, author of the Talmud, <laughs> thank you, in the third century. She is sharp witted. She is known to be an expert in Hebrew at the time. And she had the respect of other rabbis who treated her with great honor and deference. And she's also emotionally very sensitive. There's a story about when, when Rebbe gets sick and all his students are praying for his, his well-being and his continued life, she sees him suffering so. And she prays that he should, he should die so that he doesn't suffer and he dies peacefully. So she was very emotionally sensitive. There's a woman named Abaye's mother. Maya's mother must be the original Jewish mother. <laughs> she is known for her medicinal remedies, her therapies, her treatments, and probably her chicken soup. I don't remember, I don't remember talking, reading about the chicken soup. In honor of the women of Talmud, in honor of my beloved teacher, our beloved teacher, Ivana, and in honor of the seed of my brother, Paul. And I'd like to share it with you. Today. It's called Achot Vitalmidot, which means sisters and students. <clears throat> sisters in study. We reach, we stretch, we extend, we expand across time to connect with you. You of noble birth, you of clever mind, you of honorable tea, you of wit, you of selflessness, you of a man's world. Daughters, maids, wives, sisters, mothers, we hear your voices so faint and yet 
so strong, give meaning to our lives here and now. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your valor. Because of you, we sit openly at the feet of our teachers, Gam Achot Vitalmidot, to study and learn, explore and grow, question and engage, to write, to speak, to hear, and be heard.